Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised, as you can hear, probably hear in the song in the background. God is worthy to be praised. God is good. Amen. So grab your Bibles and your coffee and sit back and relax. And let's get this party started. Amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Um, I will start. Just hold on one minute. All right, okay. All right, okay. I just wanted to make sure I had it right. Um, Today is Wednesday, November the 14th. It is hard to believe we are on the 14th day of November already. It is these days are going very, very quickly, folks. And if people don't have Jesus Christ as their Savior by now, I honestly do not know what they're waiting for because he's standing, standing there with his arms open wide, amen, waiting for us. So time's going quick, and let's tell people about the love of Jesus Christ, amen. So I would like to start out with prayer. Precious Jesus, hallelujah. Lord God, you're worthy to be praised, and we're going to praise you today. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for watching over us last night as we slept, waking us up to a new day, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit into our lives to teach us that which you would have us to know, Lord God. Send the Holy Spirit into this Bible study tonight. Teach us something, Lord, that we didn't know. Open up the eyes, spiritual eyes, and the spiritual ears, and the hearts of man, so that he will hear what you want us to hear. Lord God, help me to teach this word tonight, to send comfort to those hearts that need comfort. Lord God, for the people who are sick and shut in, we're praying for them. We're praying for Israel, who is at war now. And, Lord, you said you would bless those that bless Israel and you would curse those that curse Israel. And I choose not to be on the cursing side, Lord. We want to be on the blessed bless side of blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for us that we may be healed and free. Lord, for those who are not in their right mind, we ask that you help them to come back to their right mind. For those that are being tormented, Lord God, I bind that torment in the holy name of your son, Jesus Christ, your son that other people are trying to take away from the throne. The Jesus that died and resurrected and came back alive and stayed alive. The Jesus who died for us and shed his blood. Blood and water came out of you, Lord Jesus, because you love us so much. Protection you've given us and we thank you for it. Lord God, for this nation, we're praying for America. This America is wounded right now. There's so much going on, Lord God, that there are wounded hearts and severed relationships. And we're praying, Lord God, for a restoration of those relationships, Lord God. Don't, uh, please help us uh, to not allow the enemy to separate us, no matter what party we are. We're still Americans, and you made this nation great. And, Lord, we don't want to see this nation fall into the abyss. Lord, we want the people who are in this nation who trust our leadership to be able to continue to trust the leadership of this great nation. So, therefore, we lift all of our leaders up to you from the highest to the lowest We lift them all up to you, Lord God, that they may open up their eyes and their hearts and see Jesus and realize what this nation was founded upon. And God, for every household here, I ask you to bless them. Every time we're on, I ask you to bless them. Uh, Lord, they were faithful and came on, and I want you to bless them, God. That's what you like to do, bless people. And for that, we are glad. For you have made us glad. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. 
also uh, grab your sword. Amen. <laughs> grab your sword and turn to, I'll be reading out of uh, Galatians 6, 9 and Second Thessalonians uh, 3.13. So, I'll start with Galatians 6.9. So if you want to turn to Galatians chapter 6, that would be fine. I'm going to be speaking on something tonight. And I really pray that the Holy Ghost uses me, and I pray that what I say, your heart accepts. I pray that it brings comfort to you. It's a very deep subject. It gets deeper, but I just wrote what God would have me to write, and I'll speak what God would have me to speak. Amen. Uh, And the title of it is Satan the Gang Stalker. Amen. Satan the Gang Stalker. Amen. There's something going around that is hindering the walk of Christians. A new term called gang stalking. Some of you may have heard it before and some of you may not have heard it. We're going to discuss it tonight. Satan, the gang stalker. Amen. So as as though we don't have enough to be concerned about The Lord took me on a new path the other day and showed me something that sounded quite odd, but true. The Bible tells us that we should not grow weary in well-doing. And I want to say this to you tonight. There's a lot going on around you. There's a lot going on in this nation, a lot going on maybe in your household. But do not grow weary in, notice, well-doing. Do good with every ounce of your being. Uh, There's going to be things that are going to come up to you to try to tire you out, try to make you turn against the Lord. But God brought you too far for you to turn back now. You have to continue on that path and fight that good fight of faith. And what we're going to discuss tonight, you will see why I'm telling you to remain strong no matter how weak you may get, no matter how bad you may feel. Uh, You know, we can't go by emotions. Emotions will get you into trouble every time. Stay strong. Go by your spirit. Feed your spirit, man. Amen. God tells us that we shouldn't grow weary in well-doing, and he put it there for a major reason. Galatians 6, uh, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 9 tells us, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting, everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Apostle Paul is warning the Galatians to be strong in the faith no matter what circumstances may arise, no matter what happens in your life, please stay strong in the faith of Jesus Christ, in the faith of God and his kingdom. He is telling them not to revert back to Judaism in this book. Uh, He gave them the gospel. He gave them the good news, and he doesn't want them to revert back to the old law. They are to have patience with God and wait on him and not man to receive divine direction. You need to get close with your Father God who loves you very, very much and only receive divine direction from him and he won't let you down. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. We should do that every single day of our lives. Patience is a very important word. Patience. I want to say that to you tonight and by the time I get done, you're going to see why patience takes precedence over this entire evening. Patience really is our greatest virtue. Patience is necessary to our very existence. If you ever want to sit with Christ in the great by and by, you have to live by patience in the here and now. Patience is very important. And if you have a quick temper, 
please pray to God and ask God to help you with it. Quick tempers can be your downfall. Exercise patience at all times, especially in these days and times. Now, again, in Second Thessalonians 3, uh, verses 11 to 13, it states, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, here we go again, he says it again, be not weary in well-doing. All right, you got that in Galatians 6, 9, and you got that in Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Be not weary in well-doing. Have you ever seen people who run from house to house and porch to porch so much that it makes you wonder what time they have for taking care of their own household? I'm sure you've seen people like that. They just run and run and run, and you wonder what time they have to take care of their own house, do their own dishes, take care of their family. In reality, they could possibly be participants of Satan's gang-stalking scheme. Please allow me to briefly explain what gang-stalking is to you. Gang-stalking is a divisive diversion of your personal affairs. It is the constant intrusion that you receive from various individuals who in all actuality really don't care. Its intent is to make you paranoid or drive you crazy. It can be one person to many people. As the Bible says, legion for they were many. Satan's intention is to use people to aggravate you to the point of giving up on God or maybe even giving up on life itself. Some have not made it through this test. But bless God, you're still here. You made it. God wants you to know about this tonight. Uh, I'll give you some instances in gang stalking. Have you ever gone to the gas station or the local store and somehow someone strangely and boldly jumps in front of you? could be gang stalking to aggravate you. Have you ever signed up for anything like a job interview or maybe even a food distribution program and you somehow get dropped from 5th to 20th? Satan's gang stalking you, trying to make you upset and angry so that he can prove that you're not truly a Christian. There's different types of tests that he will, that the enemy will put you through to try to, as they say, bring out the ugly in you. If you're a child of Jesus Christ, there shouldn't be any ugly in you. Amen. It's a type of disrespect, a dishonor towards you. While you were in school or maybe even in church, you were up for a certain part or a certain position, and you knew that you were good at it or called to do this thing, but somehow... Someone else gets it. Gang stalking. Or it could be different. You could get the part or the position, but something goes horribly wrong. Something right out of the blue. Or there are people mysteriously involved who badmouth you and gossip about you to the point of disaster. Have you ever had somebody badmouth you For no reason. As David said in the Psalms, he said, I have enemies for no reason. I didn't do anything to these people. And if David, the king of a nation, will go through that, you know we will. As you feel defeated and you walk away, out of the corner of your eye, you can see people smiling cunningly and life goes on. How many times have you felt defeated How many times have people who didn't deserve something received it before you did? Not that, you know, our righteousness is as filthy rags, I understand that, but I'm saying have you ever been prepared and ready and believing to get a thing and someone else gets it and you don't know how? Amen? People seemingly have powwows to determine your future. 
the the enemy wants your soul. That's why he wants you to make as many mistakes as you can. He wants to, he wants you to sin. He wants you to turn against Jesus. The enemy wants your soul. He has powwows to determine your future. Have you ever experienced injustice? I'm sure as followers of Jesus Christ we have. What about dishonor? Have you have you ever felt dishonored and you didn't deserve it? Defilement? Destruction? Have you ever had anybody destro- destroy anything that belonged to you and you didn't deserve it. You didn't ask for it. You didn't deserve it. But it just came out of the blue. What about devouring? Have you ever had someone devour your time or maybe your food or your money is being devoured? You get paid one day and you're scraping for the rest of the month. That is the enemy. That is not of God. God wants you to have abundance. You get you experience devouring, and it seems to go on unnoticed. But you notice it. Let's get to the root of the problem. All right, with gang stalking, there are a genera of demons whose job it is to create victims and harass them. A genera of demons to harass you. The enemy sends them out to try to drive you crazy. Satan hates us and wants us dead. They're called the victim demons. You have to bind and rebuke them out of your life. God gave you the power to be able to do so. You must believe that you have power over these evil spirits that wish you harm. They're trying to harm you. Believe that the blood of Jesus in his name can save you from horrible situations. Rebuke them out of your life and bind them. And maybe even if you feel like it, fast. Fast against these things. Jesus said in the Bible, there are some some of them that don't come out unless you fast and pray. What about, uh, here's an example. What about the woman who seems to get the same spirit in every man that she dates? Maybe this has happened to you. Vice versa, the same with men. Have you ever dated a few people in your life and every one of them starts out good? And then you look at them and you see that the second one acts like the first one and the third one acts like the second one. The victim demons. We have to watch out for this. This is why we are to pray first and ask God what he thinks about that person before we put our whole heart into that person. They start out awesomely, and they end up devils. Amen. Once a predator demon has made connection with a victim demon, the two hosts work together in the most damaging way. Notice I said the predator demon and the victim demon work together against us. They're working. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Are we doing what we are supposed to do? Or are we just tripping along in life carelessly, not being concerned about what happens day to day? Many a people have swallowed their guns because of these two gang-stalking demons. Praise God that we are still here. If you know anybody that needs talked to, if you know anybody that needs someone to talk to, if you know anybody that's having problems with these victim demons, please send them to a counselor. Sit down and talk to them, maybe even yourself, and help people. They're out there to rob us of life. Now, there is a difference between dominion and domination. Dominion was given to man by God to have rule over animals. It is life-giving, requires subordination, and is expansionist. Now, domination is designed to force someone else to submit at a personal cost to them. 
And that's what these evil spirits do. That's what this gang stalking is all about. It is designed to force you to submit at a personal cost. There's a distinct win-lose nature to the equation. Now, in satanic gang stalking, people try to damage you in some kind of way. You end up gritting your teeth, your blood pressure rises, you're anxious, you become impatient. Sometimes you can't sleep at night and you can't stay awake during the day. There's so much going on in your life. Sometimes you wish you can talk to somebody about it and you feel like there's no one. People gossip about you so bad that they don't even know what to believe. Have you ever had that happen to you where people gossiped about you so bad that they didn't even know what to believe? They didn't know if you were a nice person or not. They just go by what they hear. You ever have somebody run from you and they don't even know you? They just heard something about you and it scared them. You know, this is what it does. It runs people away from you. These spirits leave you or trying to leave you alone, lonely, frustrated. And there's also governmental forms of gang stalking. It entails policing, communication interceptions, application rejections. Have you ever applied for something and you knew you were good at it and they rejected you and didn't know why? Car problems, flat tires, brakes being cut, health problems, personal stalking, and pressure point agitations. This is why Jesus tells us to focus on him and not man. Jesus gave us victory. I don't care what man uses. I don't care what man does. I don't care what gossip goes on. I don't care who tries to kill your character. I don't care what part you didn't get, what job you didn't get. God, Jesus, conquers it all. We are to have trust in him. We are to give no thought to whether or not God will take care of us. We are only to believe. Just believe. Either you believe him or you don't. And the Bible also says, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If you are experiencing any of these things that I discussed just now, I want you to know that God does not want you to faint. If you have to do it scared, get her done. If you have to crawl to get somewhere, if you feel like you're crawling uphill, crawl on. Do not faint. Do not stop. No matter who says, if ten people say there's something wrong with you, Know that it's gang stalking. Know that the enemy, the devil, has sent them demons. Those people probably have open doors in them that allowed those demons to use them to harm you and try to hurt your feelings. Don't stop. And you've been hearing me saying that a lot lately, and I'm not doing it on purpose. Obviously, God's trying to make a point with someone. I realize that what I've said here tonight may be a little scary, but I... I spoke this in hopes that God would open your eyes to the truth and set you free from all paranoia and self-infliction. You know, there have been a lot of people, I believe, I truly believe that there have been a lot of people who have been labeled as being paranoid and they're not even close to it. I honestly believe that. The enemy wants you to fail. The enemy wants you to think that you'll never be anything. You're crazy. You're seeing things. You're hearing things. It's just you. And I'm here to tell you tonight, no, it's not. No, it isn't just you. 
it's your enemy. The Lord is letting you know that the whole time it wasn't you. It's not you. You weren't seeing things. You weren't hearing things. Satan is on the prowl thinking whom he may devour. He'll open your mail. He'll spread lies about you. He'll peek into your personal files, sabotage your jobs and your positions, follow you during the day, or even tap your communication. (laughs) But just remember, God sees it all. If someone is doing these things to you, you must get over it with prayer, fasting, talk to God, know who you are in Jesus Christ, and also know this. If you're living a holy life, what have you got to hide? Amen. What have you got to hide? God sees it all. Live holy, and Satan won't have anything to bring up against you in court. After all, why would he show you praising God? He's not going to show that. He's not going to bring, up, bring that up in court. It's a great white throne of judgment. He's not going to bring it up and say, look, God, they were praising you. No, he's the accuser of the brethren. Amen. Live holy. And I'm going to read from you, and, and these are my last words, Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And lastly, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Jesus Christ, your big brother in the family of God, your Savior. In Jesus' holy name, thank you for coming tonight. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. Remember, God sees it all. Good night.